there, boys and girls. I'm Coach Ashley, and I'm glad to have you in my gym again today for Rev. Over the last two weeks, we have learned that the Bible is the story of God's plan to save people through Jesus. Two of my cheerleaders, Will and Sophie, have been helping us over these weeks to discover this truth about the Bible. But before we check in with them, everyone stand up. Let's worship together. Hey Sophie. Hey. I brought you some of my favorite breakfast. 
You know what it is? <laughs> well, I sure don't. <laughs> it's cheering O's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> It was good. I'm impressed. <laughs> Thank you. You know, yesterday's practice went well, don't you think? Yeah, it did. I was so happy with what we accomplished. I feel like our team is really working together this season. Everyone is doing their part to make the team better. But the pyramid still needs a little work. You think so? What are you basing that on? Get it? Because the base <laughs> is the most important <laughs> Never mind, I'll be more serious. <laughs> okay. The pyramid needs some help. Maybe we should ask the team to practice their parts at home? You see, I don't think that would work. With the pyramid, we kind of have to work on it together. You can't really do a pyramid by yourself in a backyard, mm -hmm. <laughs> can you? We should focus our group practice on the pyramid and leave individual stunts for practice at home. While we think about that, do you think the Bible has any more stories to help us learn how to work more closely as a team? I learned so much from our story last week. That's a great idea. Everything in the Bible can be used to teach us and correct us. Did you read anything from the Bible this week? Actually, yes. <laughs> I was so interested in everything I heard last week that I spent hours reading the Bible to find out what was in it. That is so great. Do you remember how to answer the big picture question from this last week? What is the Bible about? Yes. The answer is the Bible is the story of God's plan to save people through Jesus. Yep. Every single story in the Bible teaches us about how Jesus and how he rescued us through his death and resurrection. Last week, we talked about the council of church leaders who met in Jerusalem. They agreed that salvation comes only through faith in Jesus. I remember. Yeah. We talked about how the law was a burden, and we learned that God frees us to be able to obey him. Good memory. This week, we're going to be looking at Paul. At first, Paul hated Christians and tried to get rid of them. But Jesus saved Paul, and Paul began preaching and traveling the good news of Jesus. Our story this week is called Paul's Second Journey. Let's watch it now. One night, God told Paul in a vision to go to Macedonia to share the gospel there. On the way, Paul and his friends stopped for a few days in a city called Philippi. They went to the river to pray. Some women were there and Paul started talking to them. A woman named Lydia was listening and God opened her heart to accept what Paul was saying. Lydia and everyone in her house were baptized. On another day, a servant girl met Paul and Silas. She had a spirit in her that allowed her to predict the future. The girl followed Paul and Silas shouting, these men are servants of the Most High God. Finally, Paul turned and said to the spirit in her, by the power of Jesus, I command you to come out of her. And the spirit came out right away. Now the girl's owners were upset because she could no longer tell the future. They grabbed Paul and Silas and dragged them to the authorities. The officials put Paul and Silas in jail. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing songs to God. Suddenly, a violent earthquake shook the jail. All the doors flew open and all the prisoners' chains came loose. The jailer woke up and thought the prisoners had escaped. So he took out his sword and was about to kill himself. Don't hurt yourself, Paul said. We are all here. The jailer took Paul and Silas outside. Men, what must I do to be saved, he asked. They said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. The jailer and everyone in his household believed and were baptized. Later that day, Paul and Silas were set free. When Paul got to Athens, he was upset that the people there did not worship the one true God. Instead, they worshiped many idols. Paul told the people the good news about Jesus. He said, men of Athens, I saw in your city an altar that said to an unknown God, you worship without knowing. 
Paul told the people about the one true God. He explained that God made everything. He is not like the idols in Athens that are made of gold, silver, or stone. God does not need anything. He is not far away. Paul also said that God wants everyone in the world to repent, to turn away from their sin, and turn to Him. When the people heard about Jesus being raised from the dead, some of them laughed. However, some people believed in Jesus. Lydia, the jailer, and many others were saved because they heard the gospel and believed in Jesus. Paul and Silas preached the same message to all people, no matter who they were. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Wow, that seemed like 10 stories in one. <laughs> There were a lot of people and places in that Bible story. I know. Paul and Silas journeyed to so many cities and met so many people along the way. How did Paul know what cities to go to? Well, God told Paul to share the gospel in Macedonia. As Paul and Silas traveled, they told pretty much everyone they met about Jesus. Even when it got them in trouble with the rulers of the area, they never stopped preaching about Jesus. It's hard to imagine that kind of boldness. I don't know if I could stand up for the truth if I knew I'd get in trouble for it. Where did the courage come from? That's a good question. The truth is, courage like that comes from the Holy Spirit. The Bible teaches us that He is with believers always, no matter where we go. He helps us remember the truth and know what to say to others. That's a good point. It makes sense that Paul and Silas planted new churches, because they were being guided and protected by God the whole way. Yep, their message was simple, but the power and boldness came from God's desire to see all people hear the gospel and believers. Those are some of my favorite Bible stories. I love reading about when people heard the gospel and immediately believed in Jesus. And not just the individuals, but in a few of those cases, their whole households believed in Jesus. Isn't that so awesome? Lydia, the jailer, and many others were saved because they heard the gospel and believed in Jesus. Paul and Silas preached the same message to all people, no matter who they were. Believers, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. I feel bolder already. <laughs> we can share the good news of Jesus to people at school, in our neighborhood, on our teams, and everywhere we go. We share the same message as Paul did. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Now let's head to Coach, who is going to help us review our memory verse. One important part of our daily lives is hiding God's word in our hearts. Last week, we talked about a new verse to memorize and it's Acts 4.12. It says, salvation is found in no one else for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind for which we must be saved. This verse teaches us that only Jesus can save us. We can believe in Jesus and put our faith in him. No one else can save us, only Jesus. You know, it's exactly like Lydia, the servant girl, and the others who believed in Jesus. We can put our trust in Jesus too. Jesus' death and resurrection made a right way for us to be with God. Salvation alone can be found in Jesus Christ. Today, we are going to hear more good news of Jesus. Let's pray that we can have the courage to tell others that good news about Him. God, we praise you for the good news of Jesus. We pray that you would give us the courage to share the gospel with people, with people that we know in our schools, our neighborhoods, and teams, and everywhere that we go. Amen. Well, that's all for today. I want to thank all of you for being with us. Be sure to come back next week so we can discover more about the Bible and see how it's one big story of God's plan to save people through Jesus. See you next week. <laughs>